Okay, this has a stupid set screw in here that's supposed to lock the nut so it won't ever unscrew. Right. The only problem is I've seen a lot of these screws gone, half out, or broken off. Interesting. Now, how do you break a screw off? I have no idea. <laughs> Obviously, it fractured because it's not a very good screw, but that's a whole other problem. I tend to just like using Loctite and screw those fancy screws and Loctabs. You have to find something to unscrew it with. Here's just that one right there. It's too hard to find a ratchet, so <laughs> we'll just use this. Make sure it's all the way in. It appears they have some Loctite in there. You can smell <laughs> yeah. it. Does it smell like Loctite? It tastes like Loctite. I don't know. I don't eat Loctite. <laughs> I smell it a lot, though. You didn't show the screw to the camera. Oh. There you got the screw, you can have you. Okay, this is called a socket. Here's the fit. So this is a backwards thread, which means you got to tighten it to loosen it. Sealer of some type. Now that on top of a seal means a seal won't work if that's between a seal and a piece. It looks like it's either a piece of rubber or sealer. I'm thinking sealer. See how stretchy it is? Rubber would not be, would not be that thin. So it's got some kind of sealer on it that was inside of your lip area. That's probably some of this sealer here, huh? Because this is where that boot comes in. Yeah, that's a little bit harder, but yeah, it could have been a leftover from that. Maybe it got in there. Yeah, that, or the guy just wanted to use it. Here's your seal spacer, so you want to make sure it's got a nice smooth lip on it. Not all torn up. See how it's nice and smooth and mm -hmm. no, no roughness in there? So that looks okay. Still got load on it, so I think you're all right. So this is your new bigger one here? New and improved, hopefully. There's almost no change. <laughs> okay, so now you have a six-speed tranny. We just up the gear in. <laughs> you have an overdrive. This is the road bike. Uh, we're also going to be very, very close to your covering, so I don't think it's going to clear this big ass motor. See how close it is down there? Mm -hmm. So, what's down there, rubber or metal? Because on the top of the teeth, they're rubbing on the inside of your thing there. That means you can't go this big. It's going to be a problem. Yes, it's too big. So, if you lose the chain oil, you can run a big sprocket. If you're going to run a stock oiling system, then you're going to have to not go that big. Or not this big, you have to go something else. So, I basically will, will have to lose the... You can probably go bigger than this. You just can't go that big. So, this is 22, that's a 25. We want to have three teeth. So, you can probably at least go to a one tooth bigger minimum. I don't know if you can go two. So I don't know how much clearance we got in here. Right. I don't know how thick it is through here, but obviously you can't be that big. So now every tooth you increase here is going to be a five to eight mile hour increase in speed for the bike. Well, that sucks. <clears throat> so if you go up two teeth, it's like a whole nother gear. If you go up three teeth. That's nice. We can't go that big. 
Like so that will eliminate the enclosure. Now this goes again. This primary cover goes here, doesn't it? Right. Yep. Yeah. So where's the? Why don't you go grab the primary cover again? Okay. Put that behind me. So the primary is the problem, not not the other stuff. So that's not something we're really going to want to butcher up too much. Here we go. So this guy would go like this. So, yeah, see all this material in here? All this extra thickness through here is going to be a big problem on the sprocket. See, basically, it's rubbing on it already. Mm -hmm. And you have to put a chain, chain in there. Chain on there, too. Yeah. So, that's why they run such baby gearing on the bike. And your back wheel was a 46 or 7. Forget. I know they run them relatively small. Well, they have to because they had it so small here yeah. to make this work enclosed. But there's no way you can run this big one without severely modifying this cover, yeah. which we don't really want to do. But we can obviously go bigger than this, but even this, it's a. Uh, it's tight. In there, huh? Well, they never hit, so it was good. One close about being enclosed, it with oil, the chain doesn't wear out hardly at all. So, what we need to do is find a 23 tooth because this is a 22, right? Yeah, okay. Let me go see what I got for sprockets. We'll do that. All right, I found a 24 tooth, which is a little bit better. This is your standard o ring chain that's not the super high end stuff, but pretty good chain. Sabaki. This is the uh, Omega brand, not the Sigma. So, see how the chain sticks above the tooth? About an eighth of an inch? You know what that means, don't you? No, not that. It <laughs> like that, and it doesn't fit. See, when, you, when your sprocket is not getting to your center point, it doesn't fit, see? So that means it would be a little rubbish in there. Well, I guess if your 22 doesn't have a ton of clearance, but it has a little bit. See? So keep it tight. Yeah, so 23 would be right up in there pretty pretty close yeah, you think I should just stay with stay with stock it doesn't look like there's much room you can do I don't know if a 23 would really clear because it's tight it probably would just clear but I'm sure it would rub a little bit but you know it's gonna find the high spots I don't like obviously because right now it never hit but that's it's close it's obviously you can see there's not a lot of clearance this is very small now we we're not quite centered we can go back that way a little bit the up and down is about the same so i would say you can try 23 and see if it'll fly but sure of that i don't see it happening even like i said it's going to be really really tight because 23 is going to move over I would say you're going to be about that close with a 23. See how tight that is? I mean, it's tight. Yeah. Well, it's not hitting. <clears throat> it might slap up in there a little bit and get up in here, maybe a little bit. Yeah. It'll self clearance, but I think 23 is your limit. So that's, you're right there at 23. 22, obviously, there's no problem because there's no drag marks. So I would say 23 and. Figure what you got in your back wheel and drop some in the back. I'm not sure. I know this is pretty tall, but I don't know how much you can move the chain up mm -hmm. on this side. Uh, the FXR has that uh, big heavy offset sprocket in the back. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a big boy. 
So if you run an adapter plate on there and then run a flat, uh, the normal dish sprocket, V twin has a 43 tooth steel mm -hmm. I have in stock. That would drop your diameter way the hell down. But we got to see what stock is for your bike. I don't know what it is. Okay. So we'll go do some more investigating. Let's go dig for some more parts. Okay, I went and found a 23 tooth sprocket. So I put the chain on it, shove it all the way until it hits. And you can see that we're not quite far enough yet. <laughs> so that, that's going to have negative clearance right now. It fits nice and round though. Okay, it but it might drag slightly. <laughs> It'll clearance. It'll have to clearance because it hits. So, the only way you can use this is I'd have to go in there and do some uh, machining. I'd have to cut this circle bigger to about here. Thin it out. Just not worth it for six mile an so, hour, I don't think. So that's called making it fit. <laughs> so they are committed to 22 tooth for a reason. Because that's as big as you can put in there and still work without eating up everything in sight. So that's 23. And most chains don't get any shorter on height, they get shorter on thickness. The width. Mm -hmm. So all your chains, 530, are about the same OD. You don't gain. You don't gain anything by chain. Very, very little bit gain there. It's all on the width. We don't have a width issue because you got room for a belt in here almost. So the 22 is going to be the limitation here. Looks like I can make the 23 work, but you have to do a little machining to make it fly. Like I said, that one. So that's about what you got for clearance right there. Like I said, that's your clearance. So. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's enough because it never hit. But it's not enough to go bigger. We definitely can't go to what we want to put in there. I use this on the force, the five-speed conversion bike, so yeah. that's good. All right, so there you go. We're screwed. Like I said, me, I would probably, uh, I'd make it thinner. <laughs> Pick up a gear there. Now in the back wheel, I'm not sure how much you can gain. You said you had a 46 tooth sprocket in the back. Yep, that's what she said. They make a 46, that's the same offset. To go less than 46, you have to do an adapter, which is over here. Going the wrong way there, boss. You gotta go find a, an adapter. They make a little thin one. Basically, uh, that's an adapter. Okay. So they make them whether they're only a quarter inch thick or three eighths thick. Uh -huh. The key is you want to have it where it engages into your hub here, and then you have a new uh, support for your sprocket here. You don't want to just space it out and just hang the sprocket with no support because then it can fling off. Right. Because you're putting the bolt all in shear, in double plane shearing. It's rotational shear and then also sliding off shear. Right. You don't want to be in two planes of shearing. One's enough. So they do make these in thin sizes that can be made to work. And then you can drop this down to really small diameters and gain your speed that way. I don't know how Much room small it gets in the right. back. If it's this size all the way in the back, then we're, we're fine. Because you can go down real small. So I can have effectively do the same thing, but just do it by the back side. Yeah, you come back here on my race bike and you see. See, on sports, we're limited by gear also. You can only put a 24 in here, Max, on these things. Uh -huh. And uh, this one right now, I got a 21, I think, in here, or maybe a 22. I forget okay. which one's in there right now. So to get more gear, you go back here and you drop it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a 37. So you can see how small a diameter is instead right. of being way up here. Because right. 51 is right up inside the swing. It's, right. it's way up in here. So, I usually use a 40, but when I went to the nitro motor with less RPM, I had to go more gear, so I dropped to a 37, which is basically one tooth in the front to gain that extra speed back into it. So, if you start going these little small sprockets here, then you can do what you want. Now, if you go to a flat sprocket like this, you can definitely have the offset you need, because I think you run about a 3 8 or 7 16 offset on an FXR. It's a pretty good offset. But the problem, you got to be careful to see how it gets real close to your swing arm in here, the bolts. Mm -hmm. And you're being a sealed system. I don't know how your system seals the hub. 
So there's a limit to what you can do. I don't know if you can do anything except just stock sprocket. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can come out with a quarter inch offset and run just a standard dish sprocket. In which case, a V-twin makes a 43 tooth dish sprocket for the four speed bike, but not the FXR. Not these ones. Gotcha. 86 Sportster. Nope, that's a 46 tooth sprocket. There's a small one, 43 tooth. So this is the smallest thing go with FXR is this one. This is 46 tooth. So I'll go over here with something flat. So here, hold that one like that. This is 43 tooth. See the drop? Mm -hmm. And you go down to my sprockets, I'm not here. <laughs> But you can put this, this has a 200 offset, or 100, it has 150 offset, I think, on mm -hmm. this. So you're going to have to have at least another 200 offset, a quarter inch thing. I know they make a quarter, but I don't know if they make a quarter that has the flange support in it. That's the problem. Now you can buy this sprocket FXR, 46 tooth for an FXR in this diameter. You're a 48, so you're only dropping a couple teeth, which is halfway between these two here. Just a three tooth difference. It's about the width of my fingers, you mm -hmm. think? Yep. So it's pretty easy. So. so when you get back home, you're going to have to look at your sprockets, and if you can go down to something like this here, it's basically about three and a half tooth to one on the front. So if you want to gain three up there like we were doing, mm -hmm. you got to take at least ten off the back. <laughs> So that basically be, you'd be down to a 37 from a 46. Even that's not all the way. But, right. But that'd be enough of a change. It'd make it'd be like having another gear on the bike. It'd make a tremendous difference in how they run. But you need to really you need to get serious about dropping diameters. Right. So like I said, you have to look to see how the back hub and all that stuff is made because I just I don't know how that stuff's all made back there. Right. But for now we're kind of locked. We got. Right. So. Right. There we go for now. Morning.